Smaller is better. Just ask me girlfriend. Don't be an idiot. Sorry. It's super exciting. We've got not just the Stormbox Micro 1, but we've also got the Tribit Stormbox Micro 2. And do you know what that means? It means we've updated it. Two years later, 2022, we've got the Stormbox Micro 2. Has there been huge leaps and bounds in technology in the sound? Is this now a Boombox 2 Beta? Probably not, but what it is is a very handy, useful micro speaker. Not least because already we knew from the Micro 1 because you can see, here's a clue. That's one, that's two, that's one, and they're very similar. Cosmetically, button's much easier to see now. You'd think they would have thought about that on day one. They would have thought, Hey, if we're going to put a volume up, a volume down, a multi-function button, maybe it's good if they can see them. But it's amazing how many of these brands do not think about usability like that. I'm thinking about last video, Bose A1. Almost impossible to see the controls. How does that come out of the design stage? Anyway, they've now got a bigger buttons and they are white. You cannot miss them. This is absolutely fantastic. In terms of usability, I've actually thought it through. Of course, we had this small squarish shape. It is bigger now. How much bigger is it now? Well, 293 grams, 310 grams. It's a little bit bigger. It's not a huge, so you'll find it's slightly more bulging now. But in terms of you had the, the old one, you got the new one, you probably won't notice the difference, but the difference is bigger in terms of a volume displaced. If you put it in the luggage, how much space would it take up? The Micro 2, 446 centimeters cubed versus 370 centimeters cubed. So there's probably the biggest difference, although you can't visibly see such a difference. It's a bit chunkier. And of course, we've got that very useful little strap on the back that clips in and out, which means you can strap it to your pram. You can strap it to your bicycle or indeed whatever implement you have just hang it from something or even just hold it like that. It's quite useful, it's nice and stretchy, and it's very easy to use. So you've got one, you've got the choice. Shall I upgrade to two? I, oh, <laughs> I got you there because it's not just a choice of should you upgrade, it's a choice of I'm going to show you my little trick. Um, I, I, in my last video, I think I pulled Rabbit out of a speaker. And this time, I'm going to do something even more useful. So, I'm going to connect my first Micro 2. Ding dong! Lovely, lovely connect sound, but I'm going to disconnect it. And now it's disconnected from my device. I'm going to turn on the Micro 1. Ding dong! Stereo mode. Did you hear that? Channel. Stereo mode. It's already giving away the excitement. It's, it's huge that if you've got the Stormbox Micro 1, you can indeed pair it with the Stormbox Micro 2 in stereo mode and in party up mode. It will work both ways. If you want to know how to do it, look in the manual. It's very easy. It tells you how to go into the pairing mode. The only thing you've got to remember is when you, you don't really want to be connected to the actual device to the actual, uh, yeah, a phone itself. And the same again as you just saw when I'm starting them up. And then they will detect each other immediately. I'm now going to reconnect to the Tribit Stormbox Micro 2. It is indeed stereo mode and you can very easily with the tap of a button, put it into party mode. So I wanted to get that one out. The way it's the elephant in the room, and that was fantastic news because it's not just a choice of chill out grade, it's a choice of do I want stereo? And I can get the newer version and I can play them both together. What are the other differences? But I'll tell you the main difference is when you had just nine watts of power on the micro one, but we've now got 10. It's a 10% increase. It's huge, it's amazing, it's fantastic. We've now gone from nine watts to 10 watts. Is that peak, is that RMS? How have you measured it? We don't know, we don't say. But as far as the marketing department are concerned, it's 10% more watts. But here's the thing, it's a 48 millimeter woofer. Not sure of the size 
on the Micro One. I'm not sure if they ever specified. But we've now got a neodymium magnet. What does that mean to, to me? I, I don't know, I'm not sure. Well, to you, that means less weight. So although it is actually a little bit heavier, it would have been even heavier still if they stick to the ferrite magnets in the Micro One. So there's something else going on there. If indeed, it's still heavier. And we already know it's chunkier, so maybe it, it is a bigger woofer. I don't know the exact size of the woofer on the Micro One. And they will tell you, I got run stretch technology. What does that mean? It means battery management. Here's, here's a biggie. I'm not gonna use a speaker like that as, as a power bank, obviously. Oh, hang on a second. Even though we've only got one USB-C connection, it's two-way. You can actually use the Tribit Stormbox 2 as a power bank. It will charge another device. You can't do that. You can't do that on the Micro One. They are claiming up to 12 hours. Yeah, but how, how low volume? What kind of genres? Bass heavy, blah, blah, gapless? We don't know, but they're claiming was 12 hours, is 12 hours, was eight hours. They're saying the nine watts to 10 watts means a one to 1.5 decibel increase in overall loudness, but you're not really going to shake your walls with any of these type of speakers, are you? We do have the app now. It is workable, it is usable. For me, there are some privacy concerns. Not only do you have to give them an email address, why? Why do they need my email address to play a Bluetooth speaker? Not only do they require a um, email address, they want it verified. You'll have, have to click the link in the email. It's very, already uh, alarm bells to me. And then there's a whole raft of permissions that they ask for, although actually only three of them are actually required to use the app, but should any of them be required to use the app? But yes, if you go into the app, you do indeed get EQ. I haven't played with the, the, the EQ, which gets embedded into the speaker. Yep, I'll do that in another video, but I'm comparing default to default. Just bear in mind, that's a big difference. The app supports Micro 2, doesn't support Micro 1, but there are other issues with the app. Another big difference is, well, they're selling both of them, and of course the, the Micro 1 is cheaper. So you're gonna have to decide if it's, is it, is it worth going to Micro 2? What are the prices at the moment? I'm gonna tell you. In the UK at the moment, I'd have to pay 37 pound for the one, but I'd have to pay 59 pounds. Now that's significant, 22 pounds are asking in the, in the UK extra for the Micro One, but interesting, in dollars, um, I think on their own website, $49 for the Micro One, $54, almost the same price on their own website. Um, and in dollars, that's about 50 quid for either of them. They have up the battery, and that's good, uh, significantly. Uh, that I don't do much battery testing anymore. As I, for many reasons I've, I've told you about in previous videos, and if you haven't watched them, you'll have to go and watch them all now, but it, on this particular one, at maximum volume, I was only getting uh, just over an hour. The battery on that is, on the old Micro One, was 9.6 watt hours, significantly bigger now at 16.9 uh, watt hours. That's a big increase, and for a lot of you, uh, that will maybe the main reason to upgrade for a reasonably decent sized battery now. And of course, we have Bluetooth 5.3 on the two. We was only Bluetooth 5, but you know, I know there is lots of energy efficiencies and uh, in terms of peri in terms of the range that increases with Bluetooth, with the Bluetooth versions. But I have to say, in, my, in terms of late latency in streaming, a lot of the older uh, Bluetooth 4.2 devices, for me personally, my Samsung S10 Plus, um, have lower lip sync, lower latency in terms of lip sync issues than on some of these Bluetooth 5 speakers. So they're both, when they're paired with a later model, they both do stereo pairing, both do party mode. But of course, neither of them have auxiliary in, but both can be used uh, as a phone speaker. Oh, 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 none of them, neither of them, none of them, no, not one of them has pretty flashing LED lights. Both IPX67, six means dustproof, seven means submerge it into up to one meter of water for 30 minutes, but here is the problem. If you do that and you go out and you go, you go in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and you drop it and you think, ah, ha, ha, I fooled you, because it's IPX67, it's gonna sink. What is the point of being IPX7, IPX, yeah, IPX7, if it's gonna sink anyway, you're gonna lose it, what's the point? Interestingly, both, both uh, officially in their specs are rated at 70 to 20 kilohertz. We take these ratings with a pinch of salt, especially when they don't say plus or minus uh, the decibels. 
But it's interesting, they're actually specifying the same frequency range for both of those speakers. We have one woofer in, either, in both of these speakers and we have two passive radiators in both those speakers. And in my testing, ne neither of them, even the newest Bluetooth 5, in fact, the newest Bluetooth 5.3, 265 milliseconds, that's my personal testing. That's as bad as it gets, 265 milliseconds. It's awful. I mean, it's, I was shocked how bad that was. Is that just my particular scenario? But, you know, testing other speakers, I'm getting some of those newer speakers, 50 milliseconds, which is brilliant. Um, it was 180 milliseconds, which is actually better on the Micro One, but still really, really poor. My, my, my cutoff point for not noticing or noticing, 80 milliseconds, above 80 milliseconds. That ain't good. Let's have a clue to the differences in the tuning of these two speakers with our frequency response measurements. Stormbox Micro 2 on axis facing you. And you can see on the flattish side at 40%. But the higher you go in volume, the brighter the nature is going to be. You can see even at 40%, the slant is upwards as you go towards the highs. That's going to be a bright sounding speaker. We've got peak around 5 kilohertz, again 8 kilohertz, and a massive peak around 13 kilohertz. There is some deeper bass, but the bass is most dominant in the upper bass. And if we compare that to the Micro One, we can see there's a big difference now in the tuning. So we do have more going on in the deep bass on the Micro Two. The Micro One is really upper bass dominant by a long way, and it relied on a peak around 10 kilohertz. So it's tuned very differently now, the Micro 2, and looks like it's going to go louder. Off axis, so flat on its back, the Micro 2's bright nature now becomes a little bit of a dip. It looks like it's tuned for off axis listening. Compare that to the Micro 1, where there's a, a bigger dip now when you go into the upper mids and the highs. It's a bit more balanced on the Micro 2, although neither of them, can you say, are overall balanced. And if we overlay them, off axis on its back. It's interesting to see the deeper bass now at lower volumes on the Micro 2, but by the time you hit the maximum volume, there really isn't much difference in the bass anyway. The big difference is the mids and the highs. It's just going to sound brighter. So is the difference really just in tuning? On axis, front on, it's even more noticeable once you've hit maximum volume. They're about the same in the bass. Slight advantage to the Micro 2, but the huge, huge difference is the mids and the highs, it's just much brighter. And look at that slant upwards. That is a bright speaker. So you don't need to be a rocket scientist to see that potentially, according to the measurements, the Micro 2 with its uh, 10 watts of power now, looks like it's gonna go significantly louder, but it appears to be all mids and highs. How much difference is there in the bass? And is the difference just in the tuning? Now, looking at those measurements, to me, would suggest, before we actually go into the comparisons, the two may be better for what I'm calling off at... Stop it! The back and forth. Now you have it. <laughs> that is the multifunction button. That's, I did that deliberately, so you could see me in real world use of the mic. The multifunction button, which is handily saying zero. Uh, sometimes they have playing uh, a little play pause button make it a bit more obvious but there you go it's actually a square button <laughs> on the old one so i wonder why they said no it squares useless but we'll make it round that will be fantastic what was i talking about i wish i knew i was talking about on and off axis so flat on the back i'm talking that's off axis straight on that's on axis but of course you can strap this to all sorts of things as we've already talked about so you could be easily listening to it any of those ways. The tuning seems to indicate the two probably be better with its bright tuning off axis and with a little bit more flatter uh, tuning, the micro one is probably better, it suggests, on axis. But of course you could be listening at any of these angles. But let's compare them both on axis and off axis.
Let's lose our lives in our mind Now I think it's my time It was all fake From the first day You never loved me You never said you loved me Undoubtedly, the, the biggest difference between these two speakers is the colour. No, uh, actually meaning that's a brighter sounding speaker. And that's, re that's certainly going to suit it on its back off axis. There isn't a huge difference in overall bass, but the difference is upper bass, mid bass. And quite honestly, you know, that translates from, you know, kind of a warmer sound, a more punchy sound. Again, that could be a matter of taste. So both of them, it's not, it's not necessarily a case of, look, the Micro 2 sounds better. I think the, the tuning here is, is different. Certainly the bass, when they're both off axis, is less noticeable in, in the difference than if you are on axis. The, what comes over all the time as the biggest difference is the brighter nature, uh, the stronger highs on the... Oh! The back and forth of the Micro 2. So we'll have to get into some real world testing to really see where we are with these two speakers. I'm going to do this testing at 45 degrees because, you know, that's a, that's a midway point between the, the, all scenarios of how you may be listening. I think that's the fairest way to test these type of speakers where there are all sorts of angles you may be listening at. So at 45 degrees, low volume. 40%, that's, you know, on, on, and on a speaker like that. This is a low, but don't turn the volume right up. This makes the whole thing pointless. A low volume test. Now you're breaking my heart, so I show up at your place right away. Wipe the tears off of your face while you beg me to stay. Well, people like you always want back what they can't have, but I'm past that, and you know that. So you should turn back to your rap back till I'm on trash. Tell all your friends that I'm crazy and drive you mad Then I'm such a stalker, a watcher, a psychopath And tell them you hate me and dated me just for laughs So why do you call me and tell me you want me back, you maniac? So now midway between on its back and on axis, 45 degrees, low volumes, 40%, not much in it. When their volume matched, the bass is almost the same. And the Micro 1 then has an advantage in upper bass. The Micro 2's tuning is more slanted to a brighter sound, so it may well sound to you. There's more punch at these lower volumes on the Micro 1 because of its upper bass heavy nature compared to the bright nature of the Micro 2, when loudness matched, you may well prefer the punch of the Micro 1 to the clarity of the Micro 2. That's really interesting. So at, at these low volumes, overall bass, if we're dividing it into deep, mid and upper bass, it's the same. There is a, the same amount of bass, it's just a different tuning in that bass. On the Micro 2, we've got a decibel more 
in the upper bass. That's gonna trans that's gonna translate as punch. The deep bass, of course, is so rolled off the advantage you're not going to hear. There is deeper bass on the micro two, but it's so rolled off it's not really an issue in terms of what you hear. What is an issue is the mid bass. And in the mid bass, it has a half a decibel advantage. So one decibel advantage in the upper bass, but half a decibel advantage in the mid bass. Deeper bass is there, but you're gonna hear more of the upper bass and the punch that the micro one it, at these volumes can give you, along with the fact that that's, we've established a brighter sounding speaker. So the overall balance, it, if, 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 they, if everything was the same and the only difference was warmer bass, punchier bass, the, the, it would be closer. But because your ears all, are also getting a brighter sound, that means the, the bass is less focused in the overall signature. So that actually slants it again towards the micro one. So interesting tuning for low volume where, okay, if you want, if you're listening to something with a lot of vocals or indeed just uh, audiobooks, podcasts, clearly the brighter nature is going to be your man. And of course, if you're listening off axis all the time, that's going to be a better tuning. But if that's not how you're listening and actually you want a smoother sound at low volumes, you're listening like that, then the micro one may still be a better option. So what happens at louder volumes? We're gonna hope there's more of a difference because in the UK, where we're kind of getting the wrong end of the stick, 20 quid more. Is there a compelling reason to go for the micro two at this stage? 70% volume, 45 degrees. Louder volume, 70% volume, 45 degrees. Now the Micro 2 comes into its own because that deeper and mid bass does now dominate. We still have that upper bass of the Micro 1, but you will now hear more of the mid bass and deep bass of the Micro 2, along with its brighter nature, a bit more clarity. So yes, there is the, the bigger difference now uh, at, at the louder volumes. And now you're hearing the improved bass of the Micro 2 but you're also getting a much higher treble, more of the high end. So it's more of a V-shaped signature than the, not, neither of these are flat, but it's flatter in terms of the tuning on the Tribute One at these louder volumes. Again, a lot is gonna depend on how you actually listen to it, whether you want that brighter nature or you want a smoother sound. Because not everybody, you know, I. There's a reason they call it a smiley shape and people do like a V-shaped, but if you're more of a purist, you don't want a V-shape. So you may still think the Micro One has a better tuning. For me, yes, I do find the Micro Two a better, a better listen, to be honest, uh, because I do listen over 60% and that's where it comes into its own. But it's not a straightforward, that sounds better. Like if it's the same tuning, but massively deeper bass, no. 
it's there is a difference in the tuning, and that's quite sharp, especially if you're listening on axis. Okay, what is the ultimate headroom? Is it going to go five times as loud as the Micro One? Maximum volume test. <laughs> Maximum volume on axis. There's no doubt which one goes louder. It's the micro too. It's all about those mids and the highs. And that's the real difference. Once you hit maximum volume, the bass, very little in it. Okay, there's a little bit of advantage to the micro too, which you can see here. But overall, it's very, very similar. What you are going to hear is the difference in mids and highs. It's going to sound sharper, clearer, but maybe a bit too edgy for you. But that's going to be the big difference between these two speakers. If it's all about volume, get the micro too. It certainly goes louder. It goes louder by three decibels. That big, that's huge. That is like doubling the power. I mean, we've only got 10% more power. I'll work that one out. Well, I can work it out is because they've got about the same bass. There's your clue, what's going on here? Is it just about a different tune? No, there's a little bit more power clearly on hand, but the tuning is, is the biggest difference because they are tuned differently now from how it was tuned originally with a kind of flatter. But now that the extra power is going to, to the highs, and by the time you hit maximum volume, all the difference is the mids and the highs. All previous volumes, the micro two, the micro one dominated the mids. Now, the tribute two is going louder, and that's and it's that's where all the power is going. So not for <laughs> for every not for everybody will that be a nice listen. But certainly, if it's about cutting out background noise, if you're going outdoors, you're on the beach, that's going to be a better buy. If those are indeed the volumes you're going to listen at, maximum volume. But the bass almost exactly. The same. In fact, total, to all intents and purposes, total bass at maximum volume is exactly the same. The headroom in the bass is exactly the same. There's a tad more in the deep bass that you will never hear without a magnifying glass on the Micro 2. So there you go. We've we've gone over it all. Allah Rasulu's channel where he does it his own way. And oh, I watched your whole video and you didn't even cue it. So. If I don't EQ the speaker, you say, oh, why didn't you EQ it? Then we can really see what you can do. And then if I do EQ it, what's the point in EQing it? No, I don't know what it really does. Well, it's because it's that old story of you can't please everybody all of the time. So I'm pleasing myself. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So that's a wrap. For me, it is an upgrade. The Micro 2 is an upgrade because I listen at louder volumes and I appreciate the brighter nature because I'm so old and you know we need more treble as we get older. But you may be only four years old and that may be shocking to you. Almost as shocking as you're actually me at four years old. By the way, most people, uh, according to the stats, are around 30 years old and male <laughs> who watch me. I think something like 90%, which is extraordinary, but there you go. So the takeaway is know the tuning. Understand it's not just a case of is it better than the previous because the tuning is different. So 
and that comes down to taste. Neither of them, you know, are, 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 are flat frequencies. So we're not talking that about that. Oh, that was flat. Tuning's different, and it's going that that is going to favour off axis listening. That may still be a better bet on axis listening, unless you're really, really, really clued in to the bass, and then you will hear there's a bit more going on in the deeper bass. And that, again, may be all you, you need to know. It may be all she wrote. And that's all I've written. <sighs> no, I don't write anything. As you probably have gathered, <laughs> none of this is scripted, and therefore, quite often, I've no idea what I'm talking about. But we get there in the end, and that's the main thing. We've got there, we've got to the end, and therefore, I have to say thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video. I got their life. I got their life. Ain't a project wife, got my logic right, cause I'm not your type. I got their life. I got their life. Sorry, my honey, get it right. I'ma just live my life. I ain't about that. I ain't about that life. Uh.